Hey, I want to thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, we know that Christ is our life and that he lives in us. Um, but I think that sometimes we um, forget that the end purpose of his living in us, uh, this invitation to relationship, uh, is that he might be able to express his life through us, that uh, we are called to be a people who live in surrendered obedience to his indwelling presence. We uh, live uh, from a heart of gratitude for all that he has done for us. And this uh, mindset will liberate us from the uh, very uh, uh, self-absorbed uh, lifestyles that we uh, tend to and that are so common uh, in our world, you know. I mean, uh, we live in a, a culture and society that is self-pleasing and self-gratifying and we, we almost treat God as though he were our servant uh, here to uh, do our will and to help us to accomplish our goals and purposes. But really it's quite uh, the opposite, that our fulfillment and joy will only come when we live according to his divine purposes, to know what he wants to do in and through us. And, and that works for, for our benefit when our lives are focused on him. Um, in James chapter number four, at the end of that chapter, uh, he kind of has a, a gentle rebuke for the people because they had kind of fallen into the same trap that is so easy for us. And that is just to kind of make plans about what they're going to do, re regardless of what the Lord wants to do in and through them. He says, now, come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and, and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So I think... Uh, when we, th we think of our modern Western culture, we think, well, you know, this selfish, self-absorbed life is uh, unique to us, but it's, it's a problem of humanity throughout history. And here they were, uh, early first century Christians, and they had already uh, uh, set out and said, okay, this is our plan, and we're going to go here, and we're going to do this, and we're going to trade, and we're going to make some money, and we're going to make some profit. Now, James, uh, Jesus, Christianity is not against capitalism. It's not about doing, against doing business or making money. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, listen, instead of being arrogant and boasting about all of the things that we are going to accomplish and do, maybe even with God's help, that the focus should be the will of God. What does he want to do in and through me? even if that's in my business dealings. And so he says, uh, you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring and no one does. And he reminds us that our life is but a mist. <laughs> in the grand schemes of things, uh, if we live 70 or 80 or even 90 years, it's just, just a, a small amount of time. And the time that we have on this planet should make a difference. And so let's listen to the admonition of James and say, if the Lord wills, Lord, whatever you will, what you want to do in and through me today, 
Let's do it. Uh, what you want to give through me, let's give it. Lord, where you want to go, let's go. In all of the endeavors that you prompt my spirit to do, Lord, let's do it together. I, well, I simply want to participate in how you who are my life desires to live through me. No boasting, no arrogance about what we're going to accomplish with or without God's help. No, our focus is the King. And when he does a good work through us, it should be focused on what he has done through us so that it brings glory to him and not us. Because in the end, we know that all these good things flow from his indwelling life. But think about this verse 17. Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him, it is sin. You see, the Christian life, the life that Christ lives in us and through us, is simply a life of surrendered obedience to his indwelling presence. Lord, what do you want to do? What good works have you designed for me today? Let's go, because I want to participate with you in bringing glory to you, my King, and advancing your kingdom. For you and me to live a self-willed and self-directed life, to know the good things that he wants to do through us, and to simply ignore it, that's sin. That's missing the mark. It's failing to enter into the experience of our divine purpose and calling. So, Lord, your will be done. Whatever you desire to do through me, I do surrender for that good work and purpose today. And you, friends, and me, we will be the better for it. I love you. Have a great day.